and thank you for this opportunity to come to you live right here from the rectory of St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church home worship service. We thank God for a wonderful week, a time of reflection, a time when we could plant seeds and perhaps watch them grow into the love that Christ has called us to be with one another. Our service this morning starts with the acclamation of love. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, to you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know the, our necessity before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully grant us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not ask and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 11 and 22 to 23. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and stole wheat and sowed weeds among them, wheat, and then they went away. So when the plants came up and bore, again, and bore grain, the weeds, the weeds appeared as well as the wheat. As the slaves of the homeowner, homeholder came, and he said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? The man answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then how do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. 
The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed seeds, who sowed them seeds of evil, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. So the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire. And where there it will be, and there there will be gnashing of teeth and weeping. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone who has ears hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again, St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church. So good to be in the house of the Lord here, enjoying the beautiful outdoors. A little bit of overcast this morning, but we're not worried. God is going to make a way out of no way, and you're going to see the sun shining later on today, I'm sure. Our Gospel lesson today is really a continuation of the teaching of Jesus from last week. Uh, last week, Jesus and, and Matthew had explained to us what it meant to be a sower, to throw the seeds. He didn't talk anything about what will grow or how it would grow, but he just talked about where the seeds would go and how, if any of the seeds, would grow. He didn't say who would take care of the seeds. He simply said, plant the seeds. He explained that the seeds that fell on good ground, good soil would grow, and some would have deep roots and some would not. But here in this pericope, we see that Jesus comes at a different angle. He comes with an understanding for the crowd. He wants them to know that you have a choice in life. Your choice is either to be a weed or to be a wheat. Your choice is to be that one who goes into the field and plants the weeds or the one that goes into the field and plants the wheat. Your choice today, as it always has been, is to be a follower of Jesus Christ or to be sucked into the evil of this age, ignoring the love of God. You know, here in New York, we've had a great deal of gun violence happening in Manhattan. And in actuality, in New York City, the, government, the governor I'm sorry, the mayor has passed an ordinance with the council to, def to stop funding the police department. And so there are many agents of evil, many of those who are robbers and lies and thieves and gangsters who are thugs, who are taking advantage of this time and going out shooting up people. The neighborhoods are at a loss. How do you manage this situation? On the one hand, you have the criminals who are out committing the crimes and doing what they do well, doing the evil that they do. On the other hand, you have the police who you want to depend upon, who you want to deal with, who you hope will protect you, but they too are corrupt and racist. Who will protect the people? And God has an answer for that. We have to have a new order, a new way of doing things, not just suspending some people, but getting rid of all of it and bringing forth a new type of policing, a new type of system that will protect the people. Now, many believe in New York City that the community should govern themselves. You can't do that, because if the community is governing themselves, then those gangs and those thugs and the, all of those thieves that live in the community will threaten the very neighbors and good people who will try to enforce the law. Oh, we need some type of law enforcement. But we need to plant the seed of goodness in them so that they protect the people and put the criminals in jail and bring about the peace that this city and this land so desperately needs. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this is not a political sermon by no stretch of the imagination. This is a sermon that's asking us the question on how we should live together in community. Jesus asked the question, what are you going to do? How are you going to sow the seed? Who are you going to follow? What are you going to grow up to be, a weed, or are you going to grow up to be the wheat? Or perhaps you're on the other side. How, when you get ready to harvest, are you an angel that will come down and decide who will spend eternal life with God? We must think carefully in the days ahead. 
about what it is that we are going to do in our communities and in our cities. How are we going to behave as Christians? Are we gunslinging Christians that run around pop, pop, bang, bang in the name of Jesus? Are we peace-loving people that come out and help our neighbor as well as ourselves? What kind of people are we going to be? Now, I'm not suggesting that we don't protect ourselves, but I am suggesting that we be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Mask ourselves, make sure we stay home to stop the coronavirus from, from spreading. I know it's hard because the weather is nice and we want to be with our family and friends. We want to be able also to feel protected. So make sure that we go to places where we can be, places that are safe. We want to make sure that our loved ones are protected. So make sure that we are in places where people can be protected. Because God is sending God's Holy Spirit down in a minute. You don't know where it's going to land, but it's coming. It's coming. It has to. God's Holy Spirit is coming with a solution because this nation needs God. We can no longer run away from the reality that we need an intervention from Almighty God in these times of civil unrest, of COVID-19, and now we're being told to be prepared for the West Nile disease passed on by mosquitoes that will be happening this mosquito season. Where are you going to spend not only this summer, but all eternity? Who are you going to serve not only in heaven, but here on earth? What decisions will you make to follow Jesus in these days? Let not your heart be troubled, Scripture reads. But just know that God has not left us, that God is working on our story, that God will lift us up, that God will give us a direction, and God will heal our communities. And God will send someone with an idea, with a vision of what policing should look like so that it will protect the people of all races in every community so that we may live in peace and do the work that God has called us to do as agents of peace and ambassadors of God's love in an unbelievable world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. service continues with affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came, came down, down from heaven, heaven and by the, the power, power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became, became incarnate, incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. man. For our he sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered he death and was buried. On, on the third day, day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will continue now with the prayers of our people. We offer our prayers to you, O oh God of life. You created all people as one family and called us to live in harmony together and peace. Surround us with your love as we face the challenges and tragedies of this current time. And let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, cancer or any other terminal illnesses that they may find relief and recovery lord hear us gracious lord hear our prayers for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions lord hear us gracious lord hear our prayers for doctors nurses and medical researchers that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Gracious Lord, hear our prayers. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. We give God thanks, our presiding Bishop Michael, our diocesan Bishop Lawrence, our assisting bishops Daniel, Geraldine, and William, our priest Mother Collins, Dr. Broderick, Mother Ellis, Father Suley, Pastor Kennedy, our wardens Christina and James, all of our volunteers, our vestry, and all who minister in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them and keep them well. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God, merciful God. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite your prayers and petitions at this time. Let us pray. Oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth, of love and healing, to confront one another without hatred and bitterness, and to work together in mutual forbearance and respect. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. We also pray together, O oh God, for all nations under your care. We remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of all countries who on this day decided to give their lives for our liberty, who offer their service in civil work for the police, for the, for the fire department. Grant that they may not rest until all people of this land share in the benefits of the true freedom of your love and gladly accept this discipline. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, and to know you is eternal life to share, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of the enemy, that we may truly trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of adversity, but work through it in love, and know you are God that will show up through the might of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in the image and nurturing us with the spiritual food of the sacrament of your body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love in the world and continue in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, before we get to our conclusion, our last hymn and our last, our last blessing, I want to let you know that our hallelujah kids are out and about. It's the summertime. They're out and they're about and they're being safe. They're wearing their masks and they're visiting all kinds of folk, asking all kinds of people. So let's get ready together. Get the old folks around, the seniors around. Come around yourself. Get the kids around. It's time for the Hallelujah Kids. Watch them now in five. St. John the Evangelist Sunday School. That was security that went by if you saw her. With me is Kelly. Hi, everybody. And Groovy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And Ellie Belly is taking a sabbatical today. So she wanted me to do a shout out for Miss Kimberly, Cousin Sheila, and... Um, all the other Sunday school teachers that I can't remember right now. Anyway, I want to say that the Hallelujah Kids got their first piece of mail today, so I'll let you tell them about it. Yeah, we got some mail today. Look. Isn't it pretty? It's a card from Mrs. Rice. She's thanking us for our ministry, and she says that she enjoys it so much. Yes, yeah, she really does, and we're so happy. Look how pretty it is. It's our first piece of mail, and we want to thank you, Mrs. Rice, for thinking about us and letting us know how much you appreciate us bringing the word and the joy and the fun to you and everybody else. So thank you, Mrs. Rice. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Would you like to have your letter read right here on the Hallelujah Kids? Just drop them a note. They'd love to hear from you. Just drop the note to St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church, located at 49 Blake Avenue in Lindbrook, New York, 11563. And the Hallelujah Kids will read it right here online and share it with all of the other churches. And right now, back to our kids and see what they're up to. Hi, Jay. My name is Kelly. How are you? Hi, Kelly. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. And this is my brother, Groovy. Hey, dude. What's up? What's up, Groovy? Give me five, man. Okay. And with us is Ellie Belly. Hi. Hi, Ellie Belly. Hi. My name is Sam. And this is my sister, Emily. Hi, Sam and Emily. You kind of look like Rascal. And we're the... <laughs> well, Jay, we want to welcome you, and we want to thank you for being here talking to us today. So, how's everything going with you? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's going pretty well. Everything is great. Um, crazy times we're having, though, but other than that, everything is, is amazing. Well, we heard you graduated from college. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was a long, hard uh, road, and I'm so glad to be done with it. <laughs> what did you major in, dude? So I majored in cybersecurity. I got my Bachelor of Business Administration in cybersecurity. What's cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is a field where you protect businesses from cyber threats like hackers and, and uh, people who are trying to steal your information online. Ooh. Yeah. 
Oh, that sounds very serious, especially in these times. Are you working? Do you have a job? Yeah, so I, I was lucky enough to get a job as soon as I graduated uh, uh, university. And I currently work at Novant Health down here in uh, North Carolina. I work as a, a uh, infrastructure engineer, access engineer. So pretty much what I do is um, give people the correct access for certain things, for a certain, um, for, I, I give access to doctors and, and nurses and things like that. Wow, that's pretty impressive. You are more than lucky, Jay. You are blessed. Yeah, I sure am. So, Jay, how are you making out with COVID? Has it affected you any kind of way? Um, hasn't really affected me too much. You know, I'm taking necessary steps to stay safe. Um, but other than that, everything is going pretty well. Where are you, by the way? So we're in Charlotte, North Carolina. Where, where is that? That is uh, south of Virginia, I guess. And okay. probably about seven, probably more than that, actually. Maybe 10 hours away from New York. Jay, um, you know Jesus? I sure do. Who is he? Jesus is the um, person who died for our sins. Do you know who his father is? His father is God. Okay, well, there's a story about the seed sower, and he mm -hmm. threw some seeds on the ground one place, and then he threw some seeds in another place. He threw them all over, and good and bad seeds came up. So, you know, Jesus always talked in parables. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I didn't understand what he was talking about. So somebody asked him a question, and they wanted to know why some of the seeds were bad and some of them were good. What do you think Jesus was referring to telling that story? Well, I think when it comes to good and bad seeds, um, they mean people can be good and bad. Those seeds that were spread around are, are the people that are good and bad in the world. Do you think Jesus loved the bad people? Of course he does. He has to love the bad people. Because how else are, gonna, are they going to turn out good? Well, I don't want to love anybody bad. Me well, you should love everyone. <laughs> Even if they're bad. Why? Because you treat people the way you want to be treated. Even if they have a bad attitude or, they, or they're angry or, or a bad person, doesn't mean they don't deserve love either. So it's See, important. Really, I told you. Okay, that's very good. Okay, Ellie, you wanna you wanna ask Jay some more questions, right? Yeah. Where does God live? Where does God live? He lives in all of us. He lives in your heart. See, Ellie Bailey, I told you God was everywhere. Where do you think God is with all these protests and rioting going on right now? People fussing about they don't want to wear a mask. People saying, yeah, wear a mask. What do you think? about all this rioting. What's going on? I think that it's important to keep God in your heart with all that's going on. Yes, there's no right or wrong answer, so don't be afraid. I just want to know, what do you think about the people protesting? Are they right? Are they wrong? They shouldn't? They should? What good is protesting? Yeah, so I think, or we think that um, it's kind of sad at the same time, you know, it's, it's needed, but it's sad because people are, there are more people that are coming out as like out of the closet of, of certain things or certain prejudices people are coming out of the closet of. And uh, it's important to realize that, you know, people need to love each other and that, you know, and not act out of anger. I think, yeah, I think the pro protests are necessary for the, uh, the injustices that are happening because there are happening. Um, you know, I think it's important to realize that just because we say black lives matter doesn't mean we're saying nobody else's life matters. So yeah, that's good. That's right. I think I agree with you, Jay. The protesting brings about awareness. Yes. Okay. Everybody, you want to ask Jay something? Yeah. Where is God in all this? Well, um, 
he's in everyone, and yeah, he's in everyone, and uh, to to be able to shed light on the issue, it's important. And then people need to realize that, you know, with all this hate, you're blinded by, or you know, you're blinded by God's will with all the hate. So yeah. people need to realize that love is the answer, and once and once you find love, then um, we'll have a better world. We'll have a better, much better world. Yeah. Wow, so, that's a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can't wait. Thank you. Thanks for having me, too. I can't wait to come visit you guys. Okay, Jay, we got a knock-knock joke for you. Ellie Bailey's a knock-knock queen. Come on, Ellie Bailey, give him a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Tissue. Tissue who? Tissue like my knock-knock joke. <laughs> I sure did. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, not that was a good one. That was a good one. Okay, Jay. We want to thank you for being here and sharing your insight with us. And we 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 love you. Yeah, dude, we love you. Yeah, and then we're gonna come visit you too. We love going fast in the car, right? <laughs> no, that's right. Somebody drives real fast, and you know who, Jay. Oh, okay. I plead the fifth on that you one. Gotta go now. We'll see you next time, okay? Okay, thanks for having me. Okay, wait, Jay. You got mm -hmm. a girlfriend? Huh? You got a girlfriend? I sure do, and she's right here. Okay. This is Stacy. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> okay, Jay. I'm not going to flirt with you because your girlfriend is right there. But okay, I'll see you next time, baby. Okay? Okay, love you guys. <laughs> oh, tastes like good. Celebrate, 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 Hallelujah, kids, and thank you, Jay, for being with us on this wonderful day, and congratulations on your, on your graduation, and helping to keep this country and businesses and medical professional, professionals safe in cyberspace. Well, who would have ever thought that there would be a job called cybersecurity? But we all, you stay with the Hallelujah kids, and you never know what you're going to learn. But most importantly, Jay is a fear of faith fearing young man who loves the Lord and is thankful for all that he has. We can learn something from that. So congratulations, Jay, and thank you, hallelujah, kids, for being with us and for taking us on these great adventures. You know, we come to the time of our program in which it's almost time to say farewell. But before we have our final blessings, let me encourage you. Drop us a note. Send us a card. Let us know you're doing all right. And if you need prayer, just come on and drop us a note so we can pray for and with you. Remember us in your prayers here at St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church located at 49 Blake Avenue in Lynnbrook, New York, 
11563. Listen, we will just next week. We'll be right here at 10 a.m. at the rectory of St. John's the Evangelist Episcopal Church, bringing you the word of God of encouragement and cheer. And watch us anytime on YouTube. Right there, just put in St. John Evangelist Episcopal Church, comma Lindbrook, and we'll pop right up. All of our services are right there any time of the day or night. So let us pray. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Jesus born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit that broods over the world as a mother broods over her child, be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Everything that has life. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to be in your home to minister with you. Please feel free to make your donations to St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church located at 49 Blake Avenue in Lindbrook, New York, 11560. Any donations, small or large, will be a miracle and blessing to some Have a wonderful, blessed week. And we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.